Timothy Ash is an economist at Blue Bay Asset Management. Thanks ever so much uh, for coming on the programme. What would you say the implications of this debt default are, given that the markets had more or less factored it in? Yeah, it's a reputational issue for Putin. Putin, back in 2000, said that uh, uh, superpowers and sovereign states pay their debt obligations, so a default is personally embarrassing for Putin. Over the longer term, uh, the key issue is, is when Russia comes out of default, when it renegotiates with creditors' terms, uh, and when it's able to reaccess international capital markets. That's very unlikely to happen for a very long time in the future, uh, only when the West Treasury basically gives the green light. What that means is that Russia won't have access to international capital markets. It will be borrowing at very high rates, and that will subdue investment and growth over the long term. So what you're saying is it's going to make it pretty difficult for, for Russia to return to the bond markets in the future if that's even a likely scenario. Well, as long as I think Russia retains territory in Ukraine, it will be closed out of international capital markets, so it won't be able to access financing. What other funding options are there, would you say, for Russian companies if the contagion spreads from government bonds to corporate bonds? Well, I mean, it, it will be both already. I mean, the fact that the sovereign can't borrow means pr that the, the corporates can't and banks can't borrow as well. I mean, Russia will think that it can borrow uh, in non-Western sources, so from China and maybe uh, Eastern countries. But I think that's very unlikely as long as there's a default. I think, you know, when a country's in default, I think even, you know, Chinese borrowers will be very nervous about lending. They'll be worried about their seniority in, in debt restructuring talks. And it, if they'll also be worried about getting caught in, in U.S. secondary or Western secondary sanctions. So if they do lend to Russia, they're going to charge a very high premium for that. Again, it means Russia will have to pay, you know, extremely high borrowing costs to get access to financing. But Russia has got a lot of money at the moment sloshing about from oil um, exports oil, uh, and, 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 and it, um, the energy markets. Um, it can afford to pay those higher premiums, can't it? Well... In, at the, well, it's not able to borrow at the moment because no one wants to lend to Russia, but uh, eventually it will, will want to because I think uh, one of the results of, of uh, this conflict and the problems with energy in Europe is R Russia is now seen as an unreliable supply of energy and commodities. And whatever happens in terms of this war, whether it's over this year or next, Europe and the West will uh, accelerate diversification away from Russian energy and commodities. And that means... The golden goose is kind of cooked for Russia, that its, its volumes of exports of energy and commodities will decline. Uh, and I think oil prices ultimately then will, will drop as well in the future. And its, its revenue base will get, get it destroyed. So it will be more dependent on international financing to try and uh, boost growth. Bottom line here is that the long-term outlook now for Russia in terms of growth is dismal. Russia, uh, the, the outlook is basically for stagnation for the Russian economy. Stagnation and decline. Bottom line is dismal. Timothy Ash at Blue Bay Asset Management. Thank you. My pleasure.